I thought it was a nightmare, but it's just your face. You know what it reminds me of, though, Jiggles? What? Basic bitch shepherd's pie. Oh, really? Really. Today we're going to be making one of my favorites. It's shepherd's pie. This is going to be the recipe that my mother made for us every Wednesday night. What Wednesday night? It was just her thing. It's a thing. It's what we did. Okay. Every Wednesday night she would make shepherd's pie. The first thing you want to do to get this ball rolling is to get your potatoes all chopped up. Your taters? Your taters. Uh -huh. And you want to add them to the water. What we're going to do right now while those are finishing up boiling is we're going to get our meat a cooking. So we're gonna start with our uncooked meat right here. Yeah. This is about a pound and a quarter. What is that, ground uh, it, This Yes, it's ground beef, it's lean. <laughs> so you wanna drop your meat into the little little pan right here. Just break it up, break that meat on up so I can't it'll start a cooking. Trick. You can do my <laughs> I can't do all that. Mm, it's all right, you don't have to. You're magic enough on your own. Now that you've gotten your meat broken up, like a good marriage, you're gonna take some salt and some pepper. Good marriage. Like and a good southern marriage. Just add as much as you can. You know our motto here, if you think you got enough salt and pepper, add more. Add a lot more. That's only our motto. Good word. Oh there you my go. god. You want enough pepper that Okay, you're pepper, taste yeah, but that ain't the salt. This is the salt right here. Alright, salt. Generously, but moderately and modestly. Add a couple of basil leaf shavings okay. right like here. Mm. You smell how fresh that is? Yeah. yeah. Not very, so that's good. I don't like to use fresh too much. A little garlic powder. Mm. Okay, but why garlic powder instead of like real garlic? Well, you can use real garlic, but I just said I don't like to with it. Okay, okay, I'm just asking. I just, if it's powdered and it's ready to go, I'm ready to put it in. Now that your ground beef is evenly browned throughout and cooked, so we're just going to set that to the side and let it rest, okay. and we're going to move on to the potatoes. This is my favorite part of any dish. I like potatoes. Who doesn't love a starch? Okay, I love carbs, period. <laughs> Bread, potato. Trixie Mattel can rice. be the life-size Barbie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the life-size Carby. So we have drained and strained our potatoes, and they are ready to go. They are good, moist, a little mushy, but still firm enough to, to stand up to you. Like us. <laughs> we got seven of the most beautiful red potatoes you've ever seen in your life. Like we use, like, right Fresh. Right? You can use any kind of potato uh -huh. you want, but I like a red potato because it gets nice and soft yeah. very quickly. And you can also leave the skin on. The skin is it's really it's so good. Thin. Yeah, yeah. It's, it actually kind of, it adds a nice color. It adds a, a decent flavor and texture to it as well. Cool. So we have peeled half of the potatoes and we threw the other half in with the skin on. So after we have this on our heat right now, we're gonna add a beautiful stick of butter. Yum! Now you wanna go, well you can use a sweet cream butter, but make sure it's salted. You do want as much salt as you can get in your mashed potatoes. Just stir those around until the butter is melted. Okay. Yeah. See how it's coming together already? Put just a, a little, a whisper my of garlic powder in it. Like that. We're going to put some salt. Put some pepper in it. You don't have to put a ton in there. And then we're going to take this nondescript heavy whipping cream. Whipping cream. <laughs> and we're just going to put a generous dollop in there. Oh, can we get a close-up shot of this? Because these are some of the most beautiful potatoes you'll ever Just see in your life. Right there, All right, we're gonna go back to our meat for a minute. We've left it unattended for so long. I never leave meat unattended. Uh, well, we did this time, but only because it needed a rest. It needed a rest. We have one half cup of beautiful beef broth, fresh from the can. 
Just like Jiggly. I have a feeling there's gonna be more salt in this. No, there's gonna be not be no more salt. But we are gonna add some onions. Yeah. Yeah. So red onions. I like to use. You I can love. use any kind of onion that you want, and you can just decide how much you want to put in. It doesn't really matter. But I like a good heap and helping it. The, the flavor of a red onion is so much better. Though. So now that you have your spatula, just go ahead and mix that meat with them onions and that pepper all around. It's gonna be so good. You are gonna love it. While that is warming up, let's get our dish. Now you should never trust a casserole dish that don't look like it's been through some shit in its life. All right? You need one that looks beat up because that's where your flavor comes from. Can you go ahead and start for me? Sure. I just need you to put a very thin layer of the potatoes on the bottom. Okay. It's very thin, all right? I don't know what thin is, but okay. Thin as in. I think our meat's about good, so we'll turn that burner off. We're gonna switch that out. We're gonna start layering our shepherd's pie. Start spooning that in, get you a nice, good, thick layer of that. We're gonna use all of our meat. Are you done I'm, with this? I'm totally done with that. I'm gonna uh, take it away. And now we have these beautiful, fresh from the garden, diced and then frozen, peas and carrots. <laughs> I love peas and carrots. Is it why? I don't think you can do this without peas and carrots. Some people try to, but I think they are of the devil. <laughs> of the devil? They are of the devil. This is just one bag of mixed peas and carrots from the frozen section at the grocery store. So just schmutz those around. <laughs> what schmutz? Why? Schmutz them around. You just want to make sure you've got like almost an even layer all the way through. Pat it down to make some room. It's a pie. You've got to make sure it's all packed in there. Good. All right. Okay. And then for my favorite part, the corn. Is it frozen? It was, but it's not anymore. Just dump that right on top. Pat down your layers, pat your weave, ladies. Pat, pat, pat your weave. All right, so just take up the, the drippings left from your meat. Now that you've got your veggie mix right on top, just, just dump it on there. It's just gonna add a little bit of flavor. All right, Mrs. Jigglesworth, now you get the most important job for a shepherd's pie. You have to take what's left of these potatoes, this handy dandy spatula right here, and you are going to take these, make a nice thick coating right on top. Okay. All right. Gotcha. There's plenty. Are you gonna start? Wait, it's like ghosts. It's like ghosts, but I can't reach around you. Oh, you got them? Cause you're like you got T-Rex arms. Here, let me show you. Let me show you. Not my fault. You got wrapped arms. Start from the middle. Like fucking baby dinosaurs. And just like, you know, like that. You know, I just think I put more on one side than the yeah. other. But it's okay. You know, it's a rustic dish, so you can do whatever you want. This is finely shredded. Cheddar Jack cheese blend. Mm -hmm. okay. It's, it's going to be it's my favorite part, like every other part of this dish. It's, I love this. It brings back so many memories. We're just going to use the entire bag. So wait, bag. your mom made this on Wednesdays? Every Wednesday she would make this. Because it was early release day and we'd go to the grocery store together. We'd get all the ingredients and it was one thing that... No, I was the youngest. I'm the youngest of four by ten years. So when I was growing up, it was really just kind of me and my mom. Okay. And this was one thing that I could make with her when I was younger. Okay. Something that wasn't too terribly difficult. Um, and because you're like, you'll do the layering and all that. For yeah. Me. I got okay. to be the jiggly for that. I got to, to spread the potatoes. Okay. I got to do the cheese. I got to cut the cheese. <laughs> gotta be careful when this bitch says things like that. <laughs> All right, there you go. Now we're gonna pop this into the oven. We have preheated the oven at 375. That's a whopping 375 degrees. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna cook it for about 30, 45 minutes. You'll know, because you'll look at the cheese and you'll see that it's melted and it's starting to crust over. <laughs> and if you didn't clock that, I totally lost it now. In the oven. In the, not in the pie. <laughs> later. Okay, Jenna, so what are we gonna do while we wait now that it's in the oven? Well, I think now is the perfect time to sample some sweet tea. Okay. Not the beverage, my album, available on iTunes, Amazon, and the trunk of my car. Never mind. Yeah. Well, 35 minutes later, she is crisp and ready to go. Are you ready to dig in and try this? Mm -hmm. Now, normally we would let this set up for only maybe 10 minutes. Let, Just it, let it cool down. Let it. Oh, it smells so good. So we'll just try this one together. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want some potatoes. We gotta get a little cheese. Everything. Cheese. 
Now typically we would let this set up for a couple of minutes, but we're fat and we're hungry, so we're ready to eat. You ready? Let's get too many. Cheers. It's good, see? It's really good. You don't even need to wait for it. Mm. Well, we're gonna go ahead and keep chomping down on this. And we want you to do the same. So make sure you check out the recipe in our box below. And you need to make sure that you also subscribe. Like. Until next time, I'm Ginger. And I'm Jiggly. And this has been Wigs and Blanket. Blanket. Deuces.